Yesterday, Apple announced the latest version of iOS, iOS 13, with tons of new features and updates. In this video, we're going to go hands-on and show you some of the major new changes in iOS 13. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. The most obvious new feature is dark mode. We won't spend a ton of time on this, but we do want to show you some system apps that have been updated like notes, messages, settings, etc. For the most part, each application looks really good in this dark setting, but you do get a few instances where the text didn't quite make the switch and you're left with either dark text on dark background or HTML emails that have just not formatted correctly, leaving a lot of white space. You can turn dark mode on in the settings under display and brightness with options to have dark mode turn on automatically with sunrise and sunset or set a custom schedule. You can also turn dark mode on in the control center by 3D touching the brightness slider and toggling the appearance icon. The Photos app also received a rather significant update, introducing a few new features like a curated photos library that shows you a selection of highlights from your life by day, month, or year. The photos or videos are organized in a way that makes it easier to browse and relive your favorite moments and not be bogged down by annoying accidental screenshots. The image editing interface in Photos has been overhauled to make it easier to make quick tweaks to your images, and there are new portrait lighting adjustments for moving the light closer or further away depending on the look that you're going for. Apple also added a new sign in with Apple privacy feature in iOS 13 that gives you a convenient and data safe way to sign into apps and websites. Your Apple ID will be able to authenticate your account via touch or face ID, and developers will not see your real info but rather a unique random ID. Apple can even generate single-use randomized email addresses so that you never have to give your real email address away to any app again. Two-factor authentication is built into this feature to give you even more security. Maps received a nice set of new features as well with broader road coverage, more precise addresses, and detailed land cover, but the more notable update for now is the new look around feature. Think of this as Apple's version of Google Street View and will let you see street-level imagery of a city. It's pretty fun to mess around with right now. Reminders got a much needed design overhaul and some new intelligent features that makes the app more useful than ever. The app breaks down and organizes tasks by today, scheduled, and all, and adds a new toolbar for times, dates, locations, etc. My favorite feature has to be the messages integration where if you tag someone in a reminder, that reminder will surface when you message that person. A new Find My app combines Find My iPhone and Find My Friends, and it's equipped with one of the better new features Apple announced yesterday, an option to track your devices even when they're offline by leveraging other nearby iOS devices. Here are some other quick updates that might have been briefly mentioned at the keynote, but are rather big changes. For starters, AirPods receive an update so that Siri can now read your text messages as they come in. Once you connect AirPods to your iPhone and iOS 13, a prompt will appear asking if you'd like to turn on this feature. Unfortunately, I have yet to get this feature to work even after turning it on, but it might just be early in the betas for this. Another update around AirPods is the ability to share audio by pairing a second pair of AirPods to watch a movie or share a song with a friend. Unfortunately, again, we tried this feature out, but it did not seem to work, and we couldn't even get the prompt to show up allowing us to share with each other. iOS 13 finally brings up a new volume HUD. It's definitely less obtrusive, but it's also a bit strange. It starts off as a thick bar on the left side of the screen, or top of the screen in landscape mode, and then it shrinks the longer you hold down the volume button. It's early, and there's certainly room for more improvement here, but it's definitely way better than what we had before. There's also a few new Animojis available, as well as a ton of new customization options for your Memoji, like ear piercings, lip piercings, gap teeth, or even AirPods. Swipe to type on the stock keyboard is now available. As a fan of the stock keyboard, but also a fan of swipe to type, this update made me very happy, and it works pretty well so far too. Finally, if you're a CarPlay person, you'll notice a nice new upgrade to CarPlay that makes the UI seem a lot more sleek and modern with an updated dashboard, a new calendar app, and Siri support for third-party audio and navigation apps. These are just a few of the bigger changes that Apple announced at the event, but we will have a video with tons of new updates and features in the next week, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video in the future. This has been Dan with MacRumors. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.